What is up, everybody? Welcome to Perspective Gaming. I'm your host, Flame078, logging in from the real world to give you perspective. It's that time of year again. Let's break down all the conferences from E3 this year. Let's review the games, the announcements, and the news from the Sony press conference. This video is strictly about the presentation and a brief opinion on certain games or news. If need be, and if y'all like deep dives on anything, those will come in their own discussion videos. So without further ado, let's get to it. Now this is the feeling I had watching this conference. Actually, I would place a safe bet that this is how anyone felt watching this online. Not only with the tech issues, but just the format of the entire thing. I think we have to break down what really was trying to happen here. What was the goal of the presentation? My conjecture, my hypothesis is that Sony is running out of steam and clearly couldn't keep up by hammering us with tons of games like they did in the past. And part of that is, well, possibly we're running out of exclusives that they can showcase. But another part, I think, and the more what I'm leaning towards, is that Sony is checking out for this generation. Now, watching Sony and Microsoft presentations, I do feel that both companies are checking out here. With talks of the next-gen consoles coming out, talks that this generation is over, that seems to be the case. And E3 now seems to be a reflection of the company's mindsets, both Microsoft and Sony, but that is something we should discuss later. And that changes our design design ideas around what we can do for this show. So tonight, we're going to have, rather than a bombardment of new creative, we're gonna take all of you uh, on a journey deeper into some of the key titles we've talked about before, but we're gonna talk about them in a different way tonight, a, a deeper way, so you can learn about what's going on with these games and what's coming up in the future. Now, I wanted to highlight this statement because I think this is what sheds light on what's going on at the Sony conference. Instead of many games, let's show a few. Let's show a few, but have longer showings of our features. And most importantly, let's build an experience around it. And I think this is where things fell apart. I think the intention was good, but the experience was great for those that were there, in person and live. But for us viewing online, this was kind of bad. We were forced to watch like 20 minutes or so of commentary, that, and this was because they were changing settings, so we were just forced to like dwaddle around. They didn't even show us different games, they showed us clips of maybe of Black Ops, but nothing crazy. Something that I guess in person was cool, but for the online experience and for the many, many viewers that were online, this just put us off. And taking that aside, I know this was a big criticism. People were saying that Microsoft did better because they had more games. But I would like to point out, like I mentioned in my Microsoft video, that just because you had a ton of games doesn't mean anything good came out of it. That didn't do anything for the Xbox. Remember, E3 is to hype up the game consoles, hype up the games, but the games to play on those specific consoles. That's what Microsoft and Sony have, were supposed to be doing E3 all these years. That's what Sony has been doing for the past couple of years and they've been killing it. Microsoft, not so much. But remember, I said that E3 was a representation of how these companies view the future. Microsoft has also given up this generation, and you can tell by their presentation this year. They aren't trying to sell more Xboxes. If they were, they would have given us exclusive titles to play on the Xbox. Instead, they just showed us a ton of games to reinvigorate the idea that Xbox is for games, it's a game console, not that bullshit that they were doing at the beginning of the generation be like, oh, this is for everything. The promises of new studios, the enhancements of their services, all this presentation that Microsoft put up was to tell us, hey, we are going to do better next time. Sony, on the other hand, well, they gave a different message. They were like, we don't need to talk about our games because we know more likely or not any multi-platform game, you probably will play it on the PlayStation. So let us focus on talking about the experiences we've promised you on PlayStation and highlight those today. Quality over quantity. That is the message that they were sending. But did it land? We'll soon find out. And in all honesty, the quality of games shown at Sony 
outmatched anything Microsoft did. Sony wasn't dependent on any Sony staple exclusives that carry the platform. Microsoft did. All Microsoft showed really was the Trinity, Gears, Halo, and Forza to try to stay up and relevant and that's the only thing that can really tie you to an Xbox system. So let's go over what they showcased. They started off with The Last of Us Part 2 which was really breathtaking. It opened up really nice in a calm like party atmosphere and then it switches to freaking brutality and fighting and chopping people's necks off like holy crap like wow. Which gets me excited because I still need to beat part one, mind you. I'm loving the sense of duality that they're trying to give in this narrative where it's calm, peace, getting to know Ellie versus the brutality and nature of her actions and what she has to do to survive. It's very dark, it's very gritty, it's like, ooh, I like it. Then this was followed up by Ghost of Tsushima, which was one of the most beautiful games I saw in that presentation. The setting looked really beautiful, I love the setting of Japan, samurais, that's, I love that. But in terms of a game, I'm, I'm getting a difficult time reading it because I don't know what kind of genre this is. I don't know if this is a hack and slash game or a Neo type game. I'm just not sure what kind of game this is or what genre this falls into. And once again, the beautiful art, the beautiful scenery was complemented with the brutal gritty nature of like the combat. It was really cool seeing slicing up Mongol soldiers and the narrative seems really cool in that sense as well. But then all of a sudden you get this really weird starting of a trailer you're like in a bird's eye view of some kind of animal and then eventually that animal dies and then you switch i was like oh crap this guy is getting his neck eaten out by a zombie like holy crap then he gets shot and then woo what is the reveal resident evil 2 remastered oh wow this game looks stunningly horrifically gritty brutal in all the ways but it's so good like it really brings that sense of horror to the game and ah man i got goosebumps just ugh, thinking about the damn thing then we got kojima kojima sir what are you doing death stranding to this day is a game that confuses me i have no idea what i'm going to get myself into it is creepy sci-fi dark twisted like i don't know it's going to mess with my mind for sure and i'm kind of scared of playing this game but I have to say, well, I'm very intrigued of where Kojima is taking this project. And that trailer with the music, creepy as hell. Just creepy. Ugh. But I think it's what he's building in terms of what is everyone's expectation for this title. Then lastly, it ends with the big Spider-Man gameplay trailer and whatnot. This section that they showed off was also gritty and dark and, wow, kind of brutal towards the end. You follow Spider-Man through the prison, chasing Electro while the prisons are running wild. Very Arkham Asylum-esque. It's really cool. And the game looks stunning as well, obviously, in the gameplay and moving and web slinging just look awesome. And towards the end, when he's getting the life beating out of him, the voice acting there, I'm just like, ooh, damn. Like, wow, this is a Spider-Man game. And those were the titles he's focused on. There were a couple of the small titles sprinkled here and there, but those are the ones that pop out to me like right off the bat. This is what Sony deemed important to fans' experience. Now, I have no qualm with quality over quantity. I really appreciate and I think I follow that mindset a lot. But the big thing here and the overarching thing about this conference was execution. Ideas were great, but not executed perfectly. The presentation overall for me was bad as a whole. Like... Watching that experience was bad, that transitions, that awkward timing, but also people were talking about the games, it's the games, the games. The games didn't save this presentation for me either, and for a lot of people as well. And that's because it's how the games were presented. And I say that because I don't want to say that these games are bad. No one is saying Sony messed up because the games are showing are bad. I think everyone, for the most part, are pretty hyped for all the titles that I talked about and that were showcased. It's the presentation that I think is the, the drawing factor. I don't know if you have noticed, but though all the games that I talked about, I used the same adjectives. Go back and check it out if you don't believe me, but I used the same words over and over again and made it sound that it was very repetitive. And in part, it could be because I'm not good with English and picking good words to describe things. That's not my thing. But that's not the case here, at least. 
I was very deliberate in choosing the words when describing these because I want you all to think about something. Think about those trailers specifically in this presentation. Rewatch them like back to back and think about how you feel. What do all of these presentations have in common? How was the tone of these games? What did you feel like? Think about all these things and for me, when I think about that as a whole and each individual piece of the game that I talked about, I get eerie, I get dark, I get horror thriller. Like I just walked out of a horror thriller movie. And if you agree with me, cool. If no, please let me know. But this is the vibe that I got. All these games were very ah, heavy. And those kinds of games and those kinds of narratives don't attract a lot of people. It's not a very welcoming vibe. And because of this, I feel like a lot of people felt that, damn, these exclusives that Sony's pulling out, I really can't play them. These are not my type of games. I don't like zombies eating my face. I don't like hardcore looking brutal games. Like, it was not positive in that regard. And in that sense, yeah, it kind of falls short on like Microsoft. I mean, the only really fun positive game that they showcased was a little bit of Kingdom Hearts 3 and this little teaser for a game created by the Rick and Morty creators. Spider-Man, a superhero who is witty, wisecracking, always looking for a good time, like thinks, like a, he's a bright hero. He's not a Batman hero. That presentation was pretty gritty. It was raining, it looked really desolate, and the ending was brutal. Like, all, all of it matched to this one narrative they were pushing, right? And inadvertently, I think that's what was hurting it. But I want to iterate that this wasn't because they showed less, right? The real problem was the quality of games that they chose. They did not diversify the games that they picked. Or to frame it better, they did not diversify the way they presented these games. All these games, trailers, looked and felt the same. Gritty, harsh, dark. And that is a problem. That is what I think caused a lot of people to be turned away and feel like the PS4 that Sony didn't present anything worthwhile. At the end of the day, for me, this Sony conference was filled with a bunch of positive cool ideas but just failed on the execution, failed that landing. And unlike EA, who um, basically their presentation was just I could tell you, I could tell you, I could tell you. But I won't. We actually had here in this conference information, stuff to cling to, solid gameplay for a decent amount of time to really get us excited for these upcoming titles. But overall, like the feel, the rhythm, the vibe of this presentation was just not there. That's where this failed. So Sony, yeah, no, it did not win E3. Not by a long shot. I mean, they have good games coming out, but eh. For judging my presentation, I can't say everyone's excited for what's coming to PlayStation. And that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching this video and listening to my recap of the Sony 2018 E3 conference. Now it is the time that I turn it over to you. How do you feel about this presentation? Do you think it was too dark or am I totally wrong in getting that sense? What about the games themselves? Which ones are you excited for? Leave all this and more in the comment section down below and let's get perspective. As always, if you like this video, please hit that like button and share with your friends. I will need more time to cover the other E3 presentations and this will be my last video this week that I can get out before my life kicks in. So please, if you want me to go over the others, this is what I need you to do. Engage with this video by liking, sharing, and commenting. But most importantly, please subscribe and hit that bell for notifications. That way you get all my future content. If there's something you want me to deep dive on in like a separate video, please follow me on Twitter. My handle is down below and shoot me a tweet. You know, just let me know what you think I should talk about. Twitter's the best way you can find out what I'm working on and when my videos are coming out. This is Perspective Gaming. I'm your host, Flame078, logging off for now. And until next time, adios.